So, let's talk about the unsung heroes of the tech industry. Rare Earth Elements, or REs. They're not that rare, but difficult to mine. These 17 metallic elements have unique properties. They allow engineers to shrink components and make them more powerful. Without them, clean energy, electronics, and medical systems would halt. We're going to dive into the supply chain and science behind the top five most critical rare earth elements. We'll break down what makes each special and where you'll find it. Understanding these elements is key to understanding the future of tech. Think about the devices around you. The story of these elements is the story of our connected high-tech lives. Let's get into it. First up, the heavyweight champion, neodymium, symbol end, atomic number 60. This element is a magnetic powerhouse. On its own, it's a fairly soft, silvery metal, but combine it with iron and boron, and you create the neodymium magnet, the strongest type of permanent magnet commercially available. This allows a tiny neodymium magnet to do the work of a much larger, heavier magnet. It's what has enabled the revolution in miniaturization and efficiency across so many different fields. Neodymium magnets are a prime example of a material science breakthrough that has a cascading effect. It's the undisputed king of magnets. Let's look at where it's being put to work. Where do you find these super magnets? Clean energy, like wind turbines, is a massive application. Inside, you'll often find generators packed with neodymium magnets. Then you have electric vehicles, or EVs. This is probably the single biggest driver of demand for neodymium right now. The high-performance motors that power most EVs rely heavily on these magnets. You can thank the powerful magnetic fields generated by these magnets for that. But it's not just about large-scale applications. Look around you. Even your smartphone has them. They are everywhere. From wind turbines to the phone in your pocket, neodymium is the invisible force enabling a more efficient, electrified, and connected world. Neodymium is super important. Where does it come from? The story gets interesting and a bit complicated. The majority of the world's neodymium is mined and processed in China. China controls 80 to 90% of the entire supply chain. This creates a significant bottleneck and a major strategic vulnerability. Global industries are heavily reliant on a stable supply from China. Any disruption can send shockwaves through the global economy. There's a growing push for supply chain diversification. Countries are working to build out their own domestic rare earth capabilities. It's a slow and capital-intensive process. So, the race is on. Companies are actively seeking to build more resilient supply chains. Building a complete mine-to-magnet supply chain outside of China is the ultimate goal. So we've established that neodymium magnets are incredibly powerful, but they have an Achilles heel heat. As a standard NDFEB magnet gets hotter, its magnetic properties start to degrade, it loses its coercivity, its resistance to demagnetization, and if it gets too hot, above its Curie temperature, it loses its magnetism permanently. This is a huge problem for high-performance applications where things tend to run hot, like an electric vehicle motor running at full tilt or a massive generator inside a wind turbine. You need that magnetic performance to be stable and reliable, even under extreme stress and high operating temperatures. This is where our second rare earth element comes in, meet dysprosium, symbol DY, atomic number 66. Dysprosium is what's known as a heavy rare earth element and its superpower is acting as a performance enhancing additive for neodymium magnets. By adding a small amount of dysprosium, typically just a few percent of the total composition, to the NDFEB alloy, you can dramatically increase the magnet's coercivity and its ability to withstand high temperatures. It essentially acts as a thermal stabilizer, allowing the magnet to retain its powerful properties in environments where a standard magnet would fail. Think of it like this. Neodymium provides the raw horsepower but dysprosium provides the endurance. It's the ingredient that makes these magnets robust enough for the most demanding jobs. This process known as doping is a perfect example of the subtleties of material science. It's not just about mixing elements together, it's about understanding how the atomic structure of one element can influence and enhance the properties of another. The dysprosium atoms substitute for some of the neodymium atoms in the magnet's crystal lattice, fundamentally altering its magnetic anisotropy and making it much harder to demagnetize. Without dysprosium, many of the high-performance applications we rely on simply wouldn't be practical. The motors in electric vehicles would be less powerful and more prone to overheating. The direct drive generators in large wind turbines wouldn't be as reliable or efficient, especially in warmer climates. It's a critical, albeit small, component that elevates a great material into an indispensable one. 
It's the ultimate support player, working behind the scenes to ensure the star of the show can perform at its peak, no matter how hot it gets. Let's examine where heat resistance becomes essential. Electric vehicles and wind turbines are major dysprosium consumers. In EV motors, temperatures rise during acceleration or hill climbs. Dysprosium-doped magnets prevent power loss when needed most, enabling smaller, more powerful motors. The same applies to wind turbines on a grander scale. Generator reliability is paramount. Dysprosium-doped magnets provide long-term stability. Dysprosium is also used in nuclear reactor control rods due to its neutron absorption properties ensuring safe operation. It's also in specialty lighting and data storage. Its primary value lies in high-performance magnets. So, if dysprosium is the secret ingredient that makes the best magnets even better, where do we get it? Unsurprisingly, the supply chain story for dysprosium looks very similar to that of neodymium, but with an added layer of difficulty. Once again, China is the dominant force, controlling an even larger percentage of the global supply of heavy rare earths, like dysprosium, than it does for light rare earths. This is because the ionic clay deposits in southern China are particularly rich in these heavier and often more valuable elements. This gives China even more leverage in this specific segment of the market. The challenge with dysprosium is twofold. First, it is significantly rarer in the Earth's crust than neodymium. It's just not as abundant. Second, heavy rare earths are almost always found co-located with light rare earths in the same mineral deposits, but in much smaller concentrations. This means that to get a little bit of dysprosium, you have to mine and process a whole lot of ore. The complex chemical separation process to isolate the dysprosium is energy-intensive, costly, and creates significant environmental byproducts making it an even tougher proposition than producing neodymium. This scarcity and processing difficulty make dysprosium one of the most strategically critical and price-volatile elements on the periodic table. Its price can fluctuate dramatically based on supply and demand, making long-term planning difficult for manufacturers. This has spurred a massive amount of research and development into ways to reduce the amount of dysprosium needed in magnets or even eliminate it entirely without sacrificing high temperature performance. Techniques like grain boundary diffusion, where dysprosium is applied only to the surface of the magnet grains, are helping to make more efficient use of this precious resource. Just like with neodymium, efforts are underway to diversify the supply of heavy rare earths. There are promising projects in development in places like Australia, the United States and Greenland that have significant heavy rare earth deposits. However, bringing these projects to full production is a monumental task. It requires overcoming immense technical, financial and environmental hurdles. For the foreseeable future, the world's supply of this critical thermal stabilizer will remain heavily dependent on a single source making dysprosium a key focal point in the global competition for the building blocks of modern technology. At number three, we have terbium. Its claim to fame is its unique ability to glow. When you excite terbium atoms, they emit a vibrant, sharp green light. It's valuable for tech that relies on producing accurate colors. This process is called fluorescence, and terbium is one of the champions of it. Terbium is a key ingredient in green phosphors found in lighting and displays. For a long time, terbium-doped phosphors were the go-to for generating that essential green color in TVs, monitors, and smartphones. It's the element that defined the color green for a generation of consumer electronics. But okay, terbium isn't just a one-trick pony. It's not only about the green glow. It also has some pretty interesting magnetic properties, which makes it a crucial partner to other rare earths, especially neodymium and dysprosium. On its own, terbium is what's known as a ferromagnet, but only at very, very cold temperatures. We're talking below minus 221 degrees Celsius, so not super useful for your everyday magnets. But, and this is a huge but, when you alloy it with other elements, particularly iron and cobalt, something amazing happens. It creates a material with some seriously unique properties. This is where we get into the realm of magnetostriction. That's a fancy word for a material that changes its shape or dimensions when you put it in a magnetic field. Terbium, when combined with iron in an alloy called terphenol D, the ter is for terbium, fe for iron, creates one of the most magnetostrictive materials known to man. When you apply a magnetic field, it can physically expand or contract. This effect is powerful enough to be used in some really high-tech applications. It's the basis for things like naval sonar systems, actuators, and sensors, 
that convert magnetic energy into physical motion with incredible precision. So besides these specialized alloys, terbium also plays a supporting role in high-performance permanent magnets. Just like dysprosium, it's used as an additive in neodymium iron boron magnets. Adding a small amount of terbium can significantly increase the magnet's coercivity, which is its resistance to being demagnetized by external magnetic fields or high temperatures. This is critical for applications in hot environments like inside the motor of an electric vehicle or a wind turbine generator. Terbium helps the magnet hold its strength when things heat up. The choice between using dysprosium or terbium often comes down to a trade-off of cost, availability, and specific performance requirements. Both are expensive and rare, but they offer slightly different benefits. Terbium can sometimes provide a better boost at certain temperature ranges. This makes it strategically important for building robust and efficient electric motors and generators. It's not just making things glow, it's making them go and making sure they keep going under extreme stress and heat. It's a critical performance enhancer. Now, this brings us to the big challenge with terbium, its rarity and sourcing. If you thought dysprosium was rare, terbium is even more so. It's one of the least abundant of all the rare earth elements, often found in the same mineral deposits as other heavy rare earths like dysprosium and yttrium, but in much smaller concentrations. This makes extracting it a very complex and expensive process. You have to process a huge amount of ore just to get a tiny bit of terbium, which is why its price can be incredibly volatile and high, often even more expensive than dysprosium. Just like with the other heavy rare earths, the global supply chain for terbium is overwhelmingly dominated by one country China. For decades, China has been the primary source, responsible for the vast majority of the world's mining and, crucially, the refining of terbium. This has given them immense strategic leverage over the global supply of this critical material. Any disruption, whether it's from export quotas, environmental crackdowns on illegal mining, or geopolitical tensions, can send shockwaves through the market and impact the production of everything from green lasers to EV motors. This heavy reliance on a single source is, to put it mildly, a huge concern for tech companies and governments around the world. The strategic importance of terbium is growing every year as we push for more green technology and advanced electronics. As a result, there's a major global push to find and develop new sources outside of China. We're seeing exploration and development projects for heavy rare earth deposits popping up in places like Australia, the United States, and Canada. However, getting these projects from discovery to full-scale production is a long, expensive, and environmentally challenging road. So the future of terbium is really at a crossroads. Its demand is set to increase, driven by its dual role in both high-efficiency lighting and high-performance magnets, but its supply is tight, expensive, and geopolitically concentrated. This makes recycling efforts and the development of new, more efficient extraction technologies incredibly important. Finding ways to use less terbium in magnets, or to create phosphors that don't rely on it, are active areas of research. For now though, this rare glowing green element remains one of the most critical and strategically sensitive materials in the entire tech world. Moving on we've got europium. You've definitely seen its work. Europium is behind the vibrant reds on pretty much every modern screen. It's key in phosphors, allowing displays to produce a deep, stable, and efficient red color. Without it, the reds on your devices wouldn't pop. When electrons hit europium, it releases energy as pure, brilliant red light. Europium changed the game, providing color fidelity that became the industry standard. From Hollywood to your phone, in medical imaging and aviation, europium phosphors play a crucial safety role. It's a background technology forming the visual foundation of modern life. Europium is incredibly versatile. It's also the key ingredient for producing a brilliant blue phosphor. This single element is responsible for two of the three primary colors that form every image on your screen. It's the cornerstone of the whole RGB system. Europium has a pretty cool side hustle in the world of security and anti-counterfeiting. Because its phosphors glow so brightly under ultraviolet light, they are often mixed into the inks used to print banknotes and passports. When you see a cashier hold a bill under a black light, they're looking for that telltale glow from the europium-infused ink. It highlights just how deeply embedded these materials are in the fabric of our modern, secure, and technologically advanced society. Europium is incredibly important, but it is one of the rarest of the rare earth elements. This scarcity makes its supply chain particularly vulnerable and its price highly volatile. 
The primary source is concentrated in a few key locations, with China's buy and obo mine being the dominant player, creating significant risk. There's a push to find alternative sources, but bringing a new rare earth mine online is complex and time-consuming. Looking ahead, the demand for europium is only set to grow with next-generation display technologies. This challenge is forcing the industry to innovate in recycling, recovering it from old electronics. Creating a circular economy for critical elements like europium is becoming a strategic and economic necessity. At number 5 we have Yttrium, the ultimate utility player. It's a versatile workhorse in an incredibly diverse range of applications. One famous application is in YAG lasers, Yttrium Aluminum Garnet. This synthetic crystal is the heart of many powerful solid-state lasers used in industrial cutting, welding, medical procedures, and scientific research. Yttrium forms a stable crystal lattice, the ideal structural home for the active laser ions. Without it, these lasers wouldn't work as well. Yttrium was also used as the red phosphor in early color television tubes. Yttrium is still widely used as a host material for phosphors in LEDs and fluorescent lighting. Yttrium's atomic structure makes it exceptionally good at housing other elements and enabling their unique properties. Yttrium is a game-changer in high-performance ceramics and coatings. Adding yttrium oxide to zirconia creates yttria-stabilized zirconia, or YSZ. This incredibly hard, wear-resistant material withstands high temperatures, crucial for extreme environments. Jet engines use YSZ coatings on turbine blades. This thermal barrier protects the metal, boosting engine efficiency, power, and fuel economy while lowering emissions. Yttrium strengthens metals like aluminum and magnesium, improving their high-temperature oxidation resistance. Yttrium is also key in high-temperature superconductors like YBCO, potentially revolutionizing power grids, transportation, and computing. Yttrium's versatility extends to advanced medicine. The radioactive isotope Yttrium-90 releases electrons that can destroy cells in a localized area, making it precise for cancer radiation therapy. Microspheres containing Yttrium-90 can be delivered directly to a tumor, killing cancer cells while minimizing damage to healthy tissue. This targeted approach is a powerful treatment for liver cancer. Given its wide range of uses, securing a stable yttrium supply is a major priority. China is the largest producer, creating geopolitical and supply chain risks. There's a global push for supply diversification and recycling. Developing a circular economy is becoming a necessity for future innovation. So there you have it. Neodymium, dysprosium, terbium, europium, and yttrium. Five elements that are the invisible architects of our modern world. They are the bedrock of the clean energy transition, forming the powerful magnets in wind turbines and electric vehicles. They are the heart of modern electronics. But this critical importance comes with a set of equally critical challenges, like the immense concentration of the supply chain. Beyond the geopolitics, there is the environmental impact, and that brings us to the ultimate solution creating a circular economy. We need to get much much better at recycling and reusing these precious materials. Understanding their importance is key to navigating the complex and exciting road ahead.